Hi, this is Lance Edwards, and I'm here with uh, one of our newest Circle of Champion members, Mr. Dale Steinman. And Dale has um, recently got involved in closed and purchased a 44-unit apartment building in Ohio. He used it, did it using none of his own cash. We're talking about this deal. So, uh, first of all, Dale, I want to thank you for taking the time to share this, your experience with the people who will be watching this video. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Appreciate it's that. Real yeah. pleasure. And we're actually here together. We're actually here in Houston. And uh, Dale is from Kansas, and he and his partner, Neil, who lives in Chicago, found this deal in Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Cincinnati mm -hmm. Ohio. And uh, you found it through a broker, I believe. Is that right? Yes, we did. Found it. Uh, uh, Neil had uh, developed a relationship with one of the brokers in Cincinnati, and uh, uh, the broker then called him about this uh, property, and that's the way we found it. Yeah. Okay. And I remember you guys, you, you got it under, got it under contract mm -hmm. and uh, did, the, did the deal analysis. By the way, a lot of people think you got to do, you know, apartment deals in your backyard. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, yeah, this property is definitely not in our backyard. Uh, we, uh, it's about 12 hours away from me. I live in Kansas and Neil, as you said, lived in Chicago. So it's, uh, it's about five or six hours away for him and about 12 hours for me. So it's a trip. So how do you, how do you, how do you possibly analyze an apartment deal. A lot of people are used to buying houses. They, you know, they find a house. They got to go drive across town, look at. It. How do you analyze an apartment that's you know twelve hours away? Well, actually, the distance away from your house really is it, it doesn't matter. Uh, we took uh, we both took your course, your uh, home study course. We used the analysis sheet that you gave us and taught us how to use. We filled it out and analyzed the numbers. And once we decided that this was a good property to uh, chase. Then we began to check with the, uh, the realtor more, and we, we made a trip eventually to the property to look at the property. So uh, you can use that analysis sheet and those techniques to look anywhere in the country. I mean, it doesn't matter coast to coast. So, so you determined it was a, a deal based on the numbers before you ever went to go look before at it? Before right? we ever went to look at it, yeah. Okay, super. Now, and then you, you made your offer on... On the, on the property, mm -hmm. and uh, were there any other bidders from this property, or you sold? Yeah, actually there were. This was a short sale, so it was. In, we dealt with the owner as well as the bank, and there were two other people that were bidding on the property at the same time. Uh, we just we convinced them to uh, take our bid and allow us to move on. Super, super. Now, uh, one thing I'll talk about in, in Dale's uh, strategy here, their exit strategy, Originally, you guys were looking to flip this property, as I recall, right? Exactly. You got it under contract. And exactly. Then talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, like you said, with our original plan was to flip the deal because we did also take your wholesaling class. And so uh, we were trying to take, we were using some of those strategies. And we had advertised over on LinkedIn and, and different places. And we actually wound up with a list of buyers. But we couldn't get it put together fast enough to stay up with the bank because the bank was pushing us pretty hard. So we went ahead and closed on it ourselves, but we kept that list of buyers. And so now about nine months down the road, we've repositioned the property a little bit and we're back to that list and actually have one of those buyers off of that list Brilliant. interested in, um, in buying the property. So uh, if things go well, we, we could have that deal sold in another three months. Super. Now, I want everyone to pay attention to, so they went in with the intent to, to wholesale it, to flip it. The situation with the bank didn't allow time to, to find the buyer, so you went ahead and, and acquired it yourself. And I'm going to ask some questions about that. Mm -hmm. And now you've been doing some work to reposition it, to, mm -hmm. to, to jargon for rehab, turn the property around, increase the value, and now going back to your buyer's list, to see, hey, we'd like to buy it now, but at, at a higher price. Yeah, and, and one one advantage of keeping that buyer's list is we don't have to pay a uh, sales commission. Perfect. So that puts another 6% in our pocket. So the buyer's list that we built originally is now uh, paying off at the end now with a little bit more a little bit more return on that property. So let's talk about this because I know everyone's thinking this right now. All right, so how much, if you don't mind sharing the numbers. Sure, that's fine. How much, what was your purchase price? And what do you think your, your sales price is going to be? We, uh, we purchased the property for uh, $480,000, which is just a little over $10,000 a door. Uh, we were able to get it at that price for several reasons. One of them was because it was a short sale and the bank would really like to get out from underneath it. 
Second reason was it was a little, it was dis a distressed property. The, uh, the uh, occupancy was rather low. Uh, what we did then is we did find an investor for our down payment. We had a 30% down payment and then we used his credit to finance the balance and we have it on the market now for six hundred and ninety thousand which is about a two hundred and ten thousand dollar up we feel like that uh, it's going to be about twenty five thousand dollars for our closing cost mm -hmm. so we should have somewhere in the neighborhood of a uh, hundred and eighty to a hundred ninety thousand net profit in uh, about eight months not bad yeah. not bad that's pretty it's a pretty good deal yeah. not bad and as we're speaking right now, you've got a buyer genuinely interested yes. in buying it right now. Yes, they are lining up. Uh, we're working on the LOI. They're lining up their proof of funds. Actually, uh, with other contacts that we got through your Raising Private Money course, uh, we use them to hook uh, our buyer up to a, a, a contact through there to get their financing. So we kind of have the Lance Edwards one-stop shop. I like that. <laughs> okay, so you use our system to find the deal. You use our system to know how to wholesale it. You use our system to get access to some of the financing for this buyer that you found through the wholesale process. Yes. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, let's go back to, um, okay, so bought it at 480 offered it at 690 got some closing costs in there. So you're looking at uh, excess of $150,000 probably walk away yes. on this deal yeah. over a span of about, you say, about nine months. About nine months, right. Okay, let's go back to the question that's on people's minds now. All right, but Dale, wait a minute, that part about buying it for $480,000, 30% down, I don't have 30% down. So talk a little bit about, you know, you, you found a, a private investor mm -hmm. and he put up basically 30% of 480, even do my math right, $144,000. Right. Mm -hmm. How much cash do you have in this deal right now of your own? We have no cash. Zero. Zero. And uh, actually, uh, through the process of repositioning, we were able to go in and uh, take some of the cash uh, from the cash flow, put it right back into the property to do the rehab. So we have we have no dollars. In even for the rehab, you've got zero in it. Right. It's funding itself. It's and funding roll. itself. And we, we just moved slow enough that we, we worked out of our pocketbook and out of our budget. Of course, we put a budget together so that we knew exactly how much we had to spend and when we had to spend it. And then we took that money and put it right back into the apartment, knowing that our big payday was going to come at the end, not on a monthly basis. Sure, sure. Now, you know, you've always told us to uh, keep different strategies in mind. So our first strategy was wholesale. The second strategy was uh, buy and hold. So we wanted to be sure that the property was uh, cash flowing for us. And then our last strategy, uh, strategy was then to sell. So it's all, it's all it just kind of worked out r really well all the way through the process. Super, super. 